Hey guys, welcome back, Marius here, and today we have SnowRunner second part of the videos, as you can see, previous was about game basics. Now let's talk about vehicles and equipment. I have 18 tips and tricks for you, so let's jump right to the game and see what we have there. So we will spend most of the time in a garage, so let's get comfortable and let's check what we have there. So tip number one is buy and sell everything, and it is other games use different mechanics, but basically here in this game, whatever you buy, you will sell for exact same amount. Doesn't matter if you change, if you use, do whatever you want. So buying and selling is never a problem. It's literally like putting putting in shelf and then just getting it back. So don't worry about that. It's for parts, it's for engines, it's for vehicles themselves. And whenever you upgrade vehicle with more expensive parts, when you sell it, it goes away with the car, but you will get the money. So there's no loss. So don't worry about that. That's one of the biggest tips I can give right away. Right. Let's see. Second tip is check cars in shop. This is simple. I will quickly show you. This is, you know, there's a track storage and store. And we all know that you can select and see cars. But no, 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 no. Pay attention. Pay attention. I'm. I'm in front of the buttons, but if you press spacebar, you can open and see the car. And this is really crucial because not all cars can have the same add-ons, uh, can have the same wheels. Some some of the cars don't don't use um, wheels with chains. So in, in snowy maps, it will be a problem. So you can do a deep inspection in every car. I will just let me find one of the cars for example uh, Pacer, yeah, I, I have this one Interesting part about this uh, vehicle is you can never upgrade the wheel uh, the engine It will always stay the same power to weight ratio Which is good at the start, but later on There's no upgrade. So just be aware of that, right? So you can inspect and and see and find what and how you can manage your fleet, right? Okay, tip number three is get vehicles from quests. This is something uh, no-brainer, but I need to put it here. Um, let me just show you quickly, if you are speaking about, let's say, the same off-road vehicles, those prices are pretty steep. They go beyond 100,000, which means this is cars are most expensive parts. Afterwards, purchasing something like engine or something. Let me let me check. Uh, yeah, I have purchased them, but they cost up to eleven thousand something. So cars are really really expensive. But that's where you need to manage your money. And easiest way is focus on getting those tasks done that provide you some car because you save literally hundred thousand bucks right away by not purchasing the car, but just the part, okay? If you get free vehicle. All right, point number four is uh, recover discoverable vehicles. Let me explain, there's just one little trick. When you find, a, I can show you, I have all of them collected, but there are cars where you need to drive, see them, drive near them, and it's like, okay, you discovered me, it's, it's your car now. Most of the time, these cars are without fuel, broken, no engine, all the problems. The thing is, you don't need to fix them. You can literally change the car and recover it. That's why this tip is there. Just recover it and have it fully repaired because it's most of the times they are in middle of uh, swamp, some, some high mountains and some really hard access areas. I need to mention there is a quest, there is a literal task that says fix a car and in reward you will get it. That's different, then you need to fix it to, in order to get it. But these cars that you need to only discover, don't bother repairing, don't waste materials on them, honestly. So here you go, that's a tip. Um, tip number five is items are shareable. Okay, now we jump to the actual garage and let me show you. The thing is, it, it's, I will, mention it so so you guys see for example if i pick one car and i see um different engines 
let's just quickly check the six we eighteen thousand eighteen hundred nineteen nineteen hundred sorry I'm bad with numbers <laughs> but anyways you see these three types of motor uh, engines if we select another car and jump again engines you see these are exact same and they I have exact amount this is crucial to keep in mind because sometimes for one vehicle you upgrade an engine and there's a leftover right the, the the old one but for other car that old one is the best it can use so be mindful and still the first rule applies you can sell and buy and there's no problem but these engines and not only engines other parts like tires and and um, winches and all that they they are shareable all of them are shareable so if you don't have money but you have the part on some other car like for example most used i have only one of them uh, this crane crane for loading uh, goods just just use the car you have it or take it off and put on another car simple as that right okay let's see point number six is tires are game changer this is i can't put enough highlight on this but whatever you think from all that you have engine gearbox suspension tire wind drive, all, all of that what really matters is tires because i will quickly just explain and we'll get in more details uh, in next points but uh, highway for example these are the usually for all the cars they are poor at mud and there's mud everywhere every road literally will have a place where there's mud and you will get stuck in there and mud and off-road are your main kind of problems because on the road like pavement pavement or, or asphalt there's there's no problem there's never a problem riding on a solid ground so whenever you do a first upgrade on all terrain or off-road um, tires you will see the difference and you will understand that better engines array suspension all that, that is secondary so whenever you equip your fleet pay attention to which area you are which is your main problems that's mud trust me <laughs> and then get correct tires and there will be no problem okay Point number seven is more expensive is better. This is literally talking about um, tires. Uh, when you select, I, I'm just showing you, if you select um, engines, you see the difference. Literally power to weight ratio increases, here it increases in durability, all good. Um, you see the difference. Here, when we jump on the tires, you literally go through, and I'm going through highway, let's, let's whatever peak highway none of the ratings for on-road off-road and mud changes but this is only kind of game doesn't show you there is background information i actually i will put it in the description there's an reddit post that pulled out from the game where it's compared what those num uh, numbers are behind uhd one two three and it's it's simple as that there's no coincidence that these tires cost more and more because they are they have better traction simple as that and if you pay attention to let me select some some other car and um, I think no no one shows me but uh, in some cases you see that those super expensive tires they will have double tires for heavy trucks at the back so double tires it means two tires in, in one side it means you will have less problem stucking deep in the mud it's, it's simple it's it's not only by how the uh, tires look they actually in the background there's there's difference and uh, for that it applies simple the more expensive will be the tires and the same goes for the size the bigger size you have the more uh, durable you will be when you encounter little rocks on the road and you have a smaller tire like just size you will have 
you, you, you will damage your suspension and all that, all right? So this applies if you, if you want to, let's say, be cheap and, and, and just buy cheapest tires, that's not what you want. You will, you, will, you will pay double. You will come back, sell those cheap ones and buy more expensive at the end, all right? So just go with the more expensive. And for other things, of course, it applies similarly. Engines that are less powerful will be cheaper and more powerful will be expensive. You will see that that's a no brainer and you see the difference. For tires, the difference is hidden for your eyes. So, well, at least you know now. Point number eight is width and height matters. Okay, uh, let me find a best example for this. Best example, okay. I know, I know, I, I remember what I thought I will show you. Let's take a look. Best way how to find suitable car for your need is through this screen when you want to switch it. And pay attention, I'm showing you. These both are heavy vehicles. One is, um, actually, no, uh, we'll use Pacific and Longhorn. And pay attention on the pavement, it doesn't change. It is the same. Come on, game, why are you lagging? So you see, you can find that this car will be this, the width of the car. If you select Pacific, you see the width changes. It's literally paying attention to these little details. You will find that this Pacific is at least one tire in one side, so on the other side the same. So the width of this car is totally different. And if you are talking about height the same, you just selecting those cars, you see how the dimensions change and it matters. It all matters when it comes to hills, to turning over, to getting stuck in mud. Those all are physical parameters that you need to be aware of. An easiest way to kind of compare is just, for example, you see what the height of Fleet Star and Longhorn. And yes, Longhorn is way higher. It's, it's just as simple as that. This Fleetzer is more to the ground. Okay, the, the width is not the same. But anyways, when you pick a truck for your need, just that's the easiest how you, because there's no number or given data, what's the length, height, width of the car, and, and not even the, um, how much it weighs okay so that you need to find your own on your own so now you know how to do that all right next point we have is um this is really important point number nine is raised versus stock the first i was super excited let me find my best car my favorite car is this one and i was super excited when i had it raised and i put biggest tires and it was amazing because it, I can totally ignore little rocks on the road but there's a cost and this is why it's 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 a simple point but I need to put emphasizes that when you are in hilly area where is uh, upside down sand and there's a this potential problem with well getting your car wrecked and remember when trucks are being turned over and, and all of your uh, supplies are on the ground, basically that's it. If you don't have a crane, start over, right? So that's not what you want. So first thing what you can do and what I did and in many cases, I'm simply coming and I have another set of tires, small ones, and I remove that raised. I'm not raising. Why? Because the car now is closer to the ground and it's not getting rolled over on the hills so easily so there's always a price for having raised or stock and don't think that it says stock it's like come on stock is worse everything is improved by raised no no you literally change one problem for another problem keep that in mind because at the beginning i made mistake raising all my cars and getting huge tires and then all my cars were rolling all right point number 10 is not all engines do the same okay sounds stupid well bear with me let me show you i have exact 
Remember these two cars? Let me show you what happens when you take an engine. You see three different engines. They are all the same for other car. So what, let's compare. The first upgrade gives plus one power to weight ratio. ratio. If we pick the, the last one, West Line, it gives me plus two weight ratio and it costs me more fuel, right? Simple, simple. We see the difference of engines, right? Wrong. Let's see. Let's take Flissar. Exact same engines. First upgrade gives another power to weight ratio. We knew that. Second, if we select West Line, look at this. There is no benefit. There is no, not enough difference for this car. Power to weight ratio doesn't change. The only thing what I get is it's more durable. But it's exact same engine. So you see, the same engine for one car literally gives me more durability. For other car gives me more power to weight ratio and increases power consumption. So whenever you have a, an engine and you think like, ah, this is, this is worse, test it out for other vehicles. It is suitable and find out if it's actually not better for other car. For example, here, I would never, I don't care about durability. I will stuck with this wheel, uh, engine, right? And the, the West line I will give to the other car. Simple as that. So not the same thing is not doing the same things for different cars. That's basically the tip. All right, next thing is uh, number 11, uh, off-road gearbox to switchable. Uh, quickly, I will explain what it is. Uh, for example, this is my favorite car. Why? Because you see there's four wheels drive and a differential lock is always on. You can't turn it off. It's always on, which means simple explanation, off-road gearbox uh, gives that one the bonus that when you put in lower gear you can select higher or lower uh, the stages basically right and the thing is in most cases you put in a lower gear because you are stuck and you need to tune on different uh, differential lock for this car it's always on you literally don't need that extra few gears so this off-road gearbox can be used and of course there are other bonuses than this but what I'm saying most you will benefit if you put this this uh, um, off-road gearbox for as you can see where the different lock can be switched on and off so the case is simple you get stuck in the mud you have to enable uh, lock then you put in a lower gear you put in lower gear enable the lock now you start moving but you move really slowly and then if you have off-road gearbox you can put in lower plus gear and make the car go faster so literally this gearbox best suitable is with um, where this differential lock is not always on tip number all right the last tips in this this area uh, are my favorite so laugh if you want but point number 11 is snorkel time and let me quickly explain what it is every car has this snorkel and no coincidence they are not under visual upgrades but under actual upgrades what it means please pay attention because when you drive through waters or swamps you will see how far water gets in your cabin like it is it covering up to the glass if it's not this is where you see with this snorkel, I can go about this dip, then the engine will start getting damaged. And if I take, and yes, this car has this and raised one, I can go below water levels all the way. So this snorkel, is this is not just a, um, how to say, visual upgrade. Pay attention and pay close attention. And if, if I'm currently showing you just, um, trucks it is really really important for these small cars if they are not raised if they don't have high um but it doesn't have even um this one had uh, doesn't have high high these um 
tires. So this is the snorkel, you see? Without snorkel, this car will be damaged right away when the engine room is underwater. Having at least one of them raises it quite a lot. And this is, pay attention to these because you will have a lot of water on, on your way. So yeah, now you know, it's not a joke. Point number 13 is frame add-ons differ. <sighs> it's literally, not every car can take every um, frame symbol. For example, Ang, my favorite car, it has only flatbed. There's no crane, there's no other options, just flatbed. Simple as that. And that's one of the cases. I will just quickly show you, for example, our lovely cat, who vehicle but if you look but if you look at frame add-ons there's only two of them you can carry fuel or you can carry containers nothing else there's no repair there's no i don't know seismic uh, this this stuff there's no flatbed so, there's, so be aware of that there are cars mostly these are um, there are cars that are just suitable for high saddle or, or low saddle so just, yeah, I need to mention it. Otherwise, I had the same impression that every car can be turned into whatever you want. Not exactly. This car, Pacific, has only one way. It can um, pull these, how, how you call, trailers, right? High trailers. And of course, you can low trailers as well, but just, okay. Now you know, when you make your fleet and, and um, equip your vehicles. Point number 14 is uh, give crane to heavy vehicles. It's simple. For example, we know that Pacific can't wield crane and as well. But for example, if I have to choose between Fleet Star or I don't know some, they look heavy, right? <laughs> so crane is something where you need heavy vehicle. Otherwise it will be it turns around and you will crash and that's not what you want, okay? Sim simple but still advice when you need to do... There will be quests where you will be required a crane, okay? Point number 15 is autonomous winch for scouts. I will just show you. It's again my opinion. Others will say, no, pff, you can skip it, but only scout vehicles. Come on. Only scout vehicles, when you open a winch, there will be autonomous scout. Which means, if your car turns around and starts rolling on the hill, and you end up with engine disabled, stalled, this autonomous scout, this winch, still be working. So you can actually winch yourself and turn your car around and continue without losing all the progress where you are. This autonomous scout winch is not available for heavy trucks and any other vehicles so it's only for scouts and in my opinion compared to extended advanced or high power this autonomous trust me it gets you out of the situation where your car is upside down and you're like oh damn it now i need to bring some other car to turn you around this little winch saves a lot of frustration and problems so my advice whenever you have can have it get it for scout for scout the little vehicles that are you are using for heavy uh, hard accessible areas right point number 16 is there are no just visuals so this is something i learned in the hard way <clears throat> let's take a look for example okay let's take the car you see there's customization upgrades and then there's visuals it's the game kind of represents like these are just visuals wrong this is not just visuals i will oh there was one car i wanted to show i don't remember which was what i think this was so let's take just visuals and take front side no front bumper so you see this is a um, front bumper and if you upgrade it to this one nothing more nothing happens but here pay attention these lights they actually are turned on at the, when you turn on. They're not, they're kind of just visuals, 
but when it's night time and I specifically chose this car because the um, headlights are really low and sometimes when you're driving downhills or something you see nothing without these extra uh, lights simple as that and that's that's not the only thing um, let me find the horns okay that's are ridiculous but for example roof fog lights they are also working they are under just visuals but actually they are giving more than that right so pay attention to just visuals things because they are also changing and, and improving your vehicle in other ways let's and both both next two things are when I'm mentioning are related to this one seven things tip 17 is lights blink and not all lights don't get me wrong I'm speaking about this ridiculous thing these I don't know beacons that's how you call them and I didn't know when I purchased because at that time when I upgraded the, uh, this car yeah I still I still don't have this roof fog lights where th these beacons are away uh, it's lock time not that level yet so I purchased next best thing and these damn beacons they are all the time doesn't matter if you turn on or off light they are all the time kind of I, I call it blinking I don't know the word for it so they are flashing right it gets annoying okay the, the only thing I want to give you a heads up it's annoying so you know these these visuals are and last point is exhaust outside oh my goodness please 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 guys uh, don't do it don't do it don't do it let's switch to visual side and this particular car my favorite car I drive it all the time around and this is the stock exhaust and I'm like eh, I want something better nah, and they're like oh look at this muscle this, this huge pipe looks awesome right wrong I don't know the game logic behind it but the pipe is really thick and it doesn't matter what engine you have you have a thick type there's coming out a lot of smoke and it comes directly above your car which literally when you're in third person covers one third of your screen and I will just remind you the huge um, smoke comes out whenever you change gear whenever you stop and start from gear one whenever you get stuck in mud whenever you're driving basically all the time smoke is actually coming out of your truck with this pipe you see nothing you literally get in trouble because there's smoke and you don't see that in front there's a little stump I that's why you see I get I got back to stock exhaust because it's small the, the, the smoke is coming out sm smaller there's smaller uh, the size of this uh, smoke and it's going on the side it doesn't cover my visual so I was like come on and I'm still frustrated who the hell decided this is a good idea to kind of pay for something that absolutely ruins your experience it's just okay this these are the all tips I have for you guys this time and if you missed the previous video it will be also in the description about game basics and there will be next one coming up for um, tips and tricks a lot of them driving and gameplay the actual gameplay now we have covered all other topics and we are good to go with actual driving and gameplay so thank you guys for watching it was fun and we will meet in next videos cheers